Hello everyone, I'm Robert Icey. Most of you will know me, but for you that don't, I'm the UK's number one unconscious mind therapist. And welcome to the MindClap podcast. Welcome everyone to the MindClap podcast. Today, we have entrepreneur, TV personality, the one and only legendary Tom Skinner, the Cockney, the Cockney white boy is here with us today. <laughs> it's great <laughs> to have you, you here, mate. You Thank good? you for good joining us, mate. You Thank you, as always. Um, so, Tom, um, as we've been going through the podcast on the mind, um, we've just been talking to people about you know their, their journeys and stuff, and I know we're really interested to hear your story from like where you come from. Because I know you're like me, you're working class, um, you come from the streets, and you know you've worked your way up into like this entrepreneur who's you know you're doing fantastic and 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 a fantastic businessman. So. How did, it, how, how did it come about from being from the streets of Romford to driving a Bentley? I mean, how does, how does this story work out? So how did it start for Tom as a kid? What was it like growing up in Romford and Mate, like, East London? I love growing up in Romford. Um, my dad always had his own business and yeah. uh, I just looked at him like he was, he was God, do you know what I mean, growing yeah. up. And uh, he was always ducking and diving and I wanted to be like that. I wanted to have nice things and do well. But at the same, at the same thing, it was always hard work, you know, like... Uh, at just 14 years old, I had every single paper round around Rumford. I was non-stop. I used to work in a barber shop, sweeping out here on a Saturday. I used to set up market stalls on Rumford Market. And uh, when I got to 15, I was having about 120 quid a week. Thought I was untouchable. My dad went, lovely, mate, it's 100 pound a week. House key. Back to square one. <laughs> but, but that's the best thing you ever done. Dumpy, yeah, because, talking the reality of Yeah, it was, of it was, it was talk, look, you, you think you're getting somewhere, you get knocked back down again. But... I had, look, I, I brought up a lovely, you know, lovely upbringing, like, I mean, but I grafted, I did graft hard, I was, mm. I was working for my dad in the warehouse, I was up the market stalls. And did I the was old just, man teach you, like, <clears throat> any, any market skills, or was he, he teaching you the taught ropes? Me, he just taught me how to sell, really, like, it's, yeah. it's, people buy from people they like, and people buy from who they trust, you know, yeah. when you walk into a shop, say you want to buy a nice shirt, and as soon as you walk in, someone's on you, you don't feel comfortable, that's do true, you? That's so true, And, and uh, I think he taught me the art of, of being someone's mate, and then selling to them. Because if you try and sell someone something straight away, it ain't gonna happen. So but you need to, first of all, you're building rapport with someone. You gotta get in rapport, and then you can start the sales. So. And I'm not saying I'm the world's best salesman, Rob, because I have made so many mistakes over the years, and I, I know what it's like not to have a tenner in your pocket, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I think having that going through life, having that not having a fiver to put these in the van, or not having no stock to go, or no money to go work with, I think having that hunger has made me Build and build and build. Cause years of sort of getting up and then falling down, getting up again and then falling, falling down, down, and now it's sort of leveled out a little bit, mate. It teaches you, the failure teaches you your trade, you think? Hundred percent. I mean, you say you're not a great salesman, but Alan Sugar said this geezer can sell sand to the Arabs, didn't he? Or something like that. Didn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're doing something right, Tom. You know? Yeah. You can't teach it. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, sort yeah. of just years of just getting knocked back and then finding the one that finding works. The, what, finding your own methods. Yeah. And how did you? How did that go into the market? So, like you said, you was fifteen. 14, working for yourself, paper rounds. How did it go? Because you went into the market, you were big in the market trading for, yeah, so, for a while, weren't so you? So I used to buy all the second hand bags out the wholesalers, all the ones that were damaged and all like the, oh, okay. the, the pins falling off or the buckle was broke or the zip was broke. And I used to get them for like a quid. I used to get them for like, literally yeah. like a quid. And they was like these lovely bags that were 30, 40 pounds to go and buy. And I'd take them down the market or the car, but wherever it was at, I was only a kid, and I used to set them all up, just put them all nice. I'd stuff them out of paper. If I could fix them, I'd fix them. I'd just make, if they had a little rip on it, I'd like colour the felt tip. tip. <laughs> and just make them, yeah. and, and they were fiver lines, and, and it started working. It, it started, I thought, hey, I've just done 200 bags today, like, for 800 quid profit. And, and it was oh, like, wow, yeah. you know, and it, it sort of built from there. And then I, was, then I started buying proper bags and purses, and then, just built and, and was this all on Romford Market? Oh, it was all, no, it weren't just there, it was all over the place. So I was going Dagenham down, Market. I was going Dag, Dagenham Market, it was like yeah, where I was every Sunday. Um, yeah, I thought, I'd make it all like, I was on car boots. I used, to, I, used to, I used to, when I was 17, I used to go up to uh, Mark's Tay in like Colchester, I was everywhere, mate. Anyway, one boat. thing I've got to give it to you is you're one of the hardest workers I've met. Like, people don't realise, like, you're always full of energy. I don't know how you do it, but you go up at four o'clock every day, you know, and yeah. you go gym, and yeah. then you go out and, and you, you do your bit of colour. Yeah, I just, but I think you've got to have the energy as well. Like, and, and what I've found is the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's, t- there's times, mate, like in the past when I've owed, I've owed thousands and thousands of pounds, and I thought, what am I going to do? How do I get out of this? And it's, I've got my way out of it because yeah. I've kept going. You know, yeah, it's yeah. the old saying, you throw enough shit at the wall, Same it sticks. sticks. Yeah, and it will, yeah, it, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So, when how, how did it go from the the markets? I mean, what was you like? Was you 
as a kid at school and stuff? I mean, what was you like at school? Was you did you like school or did you not enjoy well, school? Was you? I got you know this story, didn't you? Like, yeah. How I got? Shall I tell you the story? I <laughs> yeah, got tell us how you got. Yeah, I know. So, but that's the, the viewers. <laughs> <at this one. laughs> Look, it's, it's um, as when I was when I was fourteen, fifteen. I was I was uh, as I said, me paper round, had me shopping the bar, I was setting a market stall, selling anything I could, trying to get a living. I was not not that I needed a living, but I just wanted to earn money, and and I was only young, and went to my dad and went, mate. Come on, Dad, help us out. Like, my mates are going to school with fivers and tenors in their pocket. You're taking a one a week off me for gas, Keith. Yeah, what's going on, right? <laughs> yeah. Come on, look, give us a bit back, having a joke with him. He said, Don't worry, you said something like that, man. And uh, I come home one day, I think I've been football training, not rugby training, or something like that. And uh, he went, he had this big old suitcase full of full of all porno DVDs. And he went, What have we got to do? All your little mates. He said, Like, you go, three could each, two for fiver. And I went, All right, I said, I'll do that. Like, and uh, I went, <laughs> <laughs> He's a big He's a legend. He's and I was like out. I, was, man. I remember I had a rucksack, one of them JD's, you know, the drawstring bags? Yeah, yeah. And I had it filled up with the old porno DVDs. I had the old suitcase in the locker at school. I was out there going, three pounds, two for five, but knocking them out. Even the teachers were buying them, all the kids were buying them. I had all these rare, I thought, I'm having it off here. Cut the days in, I went to the lunch hall with JD Sports Bag. It was getting a bit tired now, a bit ripped in the corners. <laughs> then I can go left the uh, mashed potato, please miss, and the uh, baked beans miss. So I had the, uh, well, you got the pie, the pie, miss. I've lent over, the bag no, is split. And it's literally, <laughs> shoom, all this pull home, <laughs> all over the floor. I thought, oh, here we go. Geography teacher absolutely hated me. Aye. He said, uh, what are they? I said, come and see, you know what they are. They're pull notes, mate. Like, you want to buy one? <laughs> and he just went, picked all, straight to my office. I thought, oh, I'm going to get right in trouble here. And uh, got into his office. He said, look, he said, teacher lesson I've sent you straight to the headmaster I thought oh no and uh, I remember sitting outside the headmaster's obviously I'm trying to ring your, your parents and I was thinking please sir ring me mum because like you don't beat me dad my dad's going to come down and go mental you know what I mean yeah, I know yeah. my dad's like ring me mum she'll tell me off be fine won't do it again sitting there waiting and he's, he's made his I couldn't even ring me dad and I, I, had, I had my dad uh, on the phone and my dad I remember my dad on the phone going what can he done a number for me something <laughs> and he went oh well that's the headmaster at school and he goes oh What's he done now? Like, he said, well, I've caught him. Like, can you come down and have a chat with you? Dad's come down to school and he's got all these porno stacked on the desk. And I thought, oh, here we go. Like, and, and, then, and he's gone, look, what he's done's illegal. And my dad went, look, I'm really sorry. I'm just trying to teach him out of a bit of, bit of new, like buy and sell his mates. Like, they're all that age, like a bit of porno, don't they? Do you know what I mean? And my dad said, look, it's my fault. Hold yeah. my hands up. Like, don't, don't have a go at him and uh, expel him from school. He said, what he's done is illegal, the police should be rung and all this. And that was my last day at school. So, <laughs> so from that, but he taught me a lesson. And I, I remember walking back to the car with my dad and I was like, oh, dad, am I in trouble? And he went, no, of course you ain't. You ain't done nothing wrong. Like you're using, you're using your head. You know, he said, though, yeah. Like, when, like, and let's be honest, like, when have you ever used half of what you taught at school nowadays in it's real true, life? Yeah, it's true. Apart from adding up maths and how to add a letter up, there's not a lot in school that I've, that I, because I'm dyslexic, I'm yeah. terrible at reading and writing, and I've struggled all my life. But no yeah. one ever taught me how to get a bank account. No one ever taught me how to save money. No, you know, the things yeah. that, that I had to learn the hard way. They don't teach you that at school. They don't teach, and that's what I think is wrong with nowadays society. It's so wrong. Yeah, it's true. They don't teach you how to deal with money, how to become a businessman. No. I mean, most people that go business, they go like these business degrees, they end up working for someone. You think, why the exactly. fuck have you gone and done and a business and degree? I think that, like, it's the, the school of hard knocks is, is, is the, I think, the way of the world. And I think that's why I'm so lucky that. I had that upbringing. I had that one one week we, we, we're having it off as a family, and then next, next week we skin. are skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think having that growing there up, there is a little bit of a dopamine release with that lifestyle, though, isn't there? Because I'm from working class, it's I know the buzz, it's like it? you're it's up, you down. It's, it's like the buzz. You, you love the chase. Yeah, it's, yeah. Mate, there's, and there's nothing better than well, this is what I've when I've been at work all week, and I've had so I've had four or five terrible weeks, and I've one blinding week, yeah, and I'm still the same, still that now. Even if I know that next week I might have nothing, I will still go out and I will still spend that money. I'll go out to the best restaurant, take my miss or whatever it is. And do you know why? Because it's that hunger. I yeah. want to earn it again and I want to do it again. If yeah, I, yeah. I really do believe in that. Yeah, you need that fix, that, that chase in it's life. It's that buzz yeah. to keep going, isn't it? That next, <laughs> what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? How am I going to get there? So how, how, how did it, um, how did you go from the market into working for your own business? Because I know you've got like the Fluffy Pillar Company. Yeah, so. Which is, by the way, I've got to say, hilarious because all, you and all your little firm, no one's, <laughs> no one's smaller than six foot fucking two. And they turn up at doors like henchmen, do you know what I mean? They're like, hello, we're from the Fluffy Pillar Company. Like, you look more like it men than the Fluffy Pillar men. Well, it's all me mates. It's all yeah, my I know, mates yeah, that I, that I grew up with. I've took them all with me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. And it's like, it's listen, great. Look, 
listen, I'm going to be honest. I've, and I've, I've, I've held my hands up. I've, I've been in trouble with me slap on the wrist and whatever. And I've done a talk about that, yeah, but yeah. I've done done bits and pieces in my yeah. past that I ain't proud of, but I've done also had to. Yeah. And again, it taught me to be a better person. 100%. Yeah. I learned from lessons I had. Do you know what I mean? I've been nicked. I've, yeah. I've done the, I've done terrible things, and 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 I've moved on from that, and I've put it all behind me. But I've learned from it, and all my friends. So now that I've had a le- I've had a leg up, especially with going on the Apprentice, yeah. I've took them all with me. I've got yeah, every single quality, one yeah. of them with me, and and like it is, it's true. We sell fluffy pillars, and we sell the best mattresses, yeah. And we we do. We have got six foot five geezers <laughs> covered in toes and scars, but lovely guys. They're the best people pals, in the world, yeah, and they're my friends. Folks. They're my family. Yeah. yeah, that's lovely, Tom. That is lovely, mate. That's class, actually. Beautiful thing. And how did, how did it go though? From the markets into the pillars. How did that work? How so, did that come across? I'll tell, tell you how it actually started. I was about 20, 21 years old and we had a little lock up in Canvey Island in Essex and I was down there with my mate Aaron and Sam. My mate, no, it was, it was my mate Sam was down there with, Sam McCarthy. And uh, he's a stockbroker in the city now. And we were sweeping up this yard and we had all these handbags that we were sorting out. And Laurie, come on. Lovely man, I've become really good friends with him. And he, he, he had an old lorry and he, he opened up. He said, do you want to buy a mattress, boy? I said, what you got? What? He said, what it is? He gave me the old spiel. He said, deliver into an hotel down the road. He said, they ordered, they ordered 30, I only had five. I've got 25 left over. He said, they're this, that, boom, boom, boom. Give me a spiel. I thought, bloody hell, they're 1,000 quid. What, you only want one and a half for them? <laughs> he said, I said, tell you what, I'll have, I'll have four. I had that ready for four yeah. and I bought them. Put them in my mate, what are you buying them for? With the handbags. I went, mate, they're so cheap. Like, he went all right. So then I had uh, got on the phone, and at the time it was Black. Remember BB, BBM, Blackberry Messenger? Yeah, yeah, I remember you could that. Send yeah, a little, little roll on it. Yeah, you yeah. send a little thing out to what? Like, it was about yeah. 10, 11, wasn't it? How long ago? I sent this broadcast out, everyone got these lovely matches, are a thousand pounds, meant to be in the hotel, you can have them 200 quid, I thought 50 quid a mattress. Within five minutes, ding, I'll have one Tom, ding, I'll have one Tom, ding. I thought, God, the hell, done. So I got in my van, dropped them all off, and myself a tour in half hour. I thought, that's lovely. I run the keys, I said, you got any more of them matches? <laughs> he went, yeah, of course I have. I went, I'll have a van load. Started like that, and then we started building it up and up and up. And then I found out where to get them made from. Then I went to Manchester, met the manufacturers, um, got the major wholesalers in London, and we carried on growing and growing and growing. Then we got into pillows, which is when, at that stage, I, I needed an investment, and that's why I went on to The Apprentice to do the ah, pillows okay. and uh, mate it just, it's just it's like a snowball how did effect. that go about the, how did you get onto the printer I mean what was the how did you what did you do to get onto the printer did you actually send the tape in yeah, how, so how well, does it all work again you know I'm dyslexic yeah. so you have to fill out a form now I don't watch The Apprentice yeah. I don't, it's not my programme um, one of the biggest few programmes there is but Sinead my, my partner over there yeah. uh, she loves The Apprentice and uh, she just was watching it and just went, you could do this easy. Like, yeah. and I went, oh, come babe, like, they ain't gonna want me on there, do you know what I mean? And she went, no, go on, I'll fill out the form. It was a laugh, filled it out, sent it in, thought nothing of it. And uh, they, they sent a form back saying, listen guys, like, we've read this thing. She's obviously big me right up, do you know what I mean? Said everything <laughs> I ain't on the form. <laughs> and uh, and uh, said, can you come down to London to have an interview? I went, I'd absolutely love to. So I've gone down there and, uh, I, did, I wasn't the smartest person in the world down there. I walked in there, everyone's got a three-piece suit and I think I had a roll neck or saying on or a polo or saying on and everyone's got a briefcase with their work experience. Listen, I grew up on a market, you know what I mean? I've, I've been grafting out of vans and, back, and boots of cars. So, so I was a bit different and you go in this room, the first room you go into and there's, there's a numbers one to 50 and you stand on this number ball and they call your name out and you get 30 seconds. And I remember that I got put on number 13, which is my unlucky number, and I said, Oi, you, <laughs> no, swap with me. <laughs> Straight away, I swap with, with someone else. And uh, everyone's going, oh, my name's John Smith, and I worked up here, and I do this, and they're just making nonsense. They've, gone, they've called my number, and I said, oh, I'm Tom Skin, I know how to make a few quid. I don't know why I'm here, but it looks like a good laugh, or whatever I said. And they've gone, you, through the next room. And I thought, oh, lovely. And you literally, literally go up in the lift. I promise you, go up in the lift to the next floor. And then you got a lady there, and she's sitting there, she's interviewing you. And everyone looks all serious, and I'm having a laugh. So I'm having a, I'm having a chat with her. She's, yeah, okay. she's going, so do you want to be on telly, or do you want to be, be in the business? I said, well, listen, love, it's been, I want to be on both, do you know what I mean? Yeah, she yeah. just got cracking up laughing. No one's ever said that before. Everyone says it's all about the business. So, well, who wants to go on a, on a show? They want to be on a mm, telly, telly, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's gone, go on, next, next, next floor, and then they go up, and then they start ripping your business to pieces. And these are Lordship's advisors, and they're both sitting there. 
and uh, they was whipping into me going, oh, you've got this big company, you've got this, you've got that. And I just said, excuse me, excuse me, mate, just hang on a minute. I said, I said just because you sleep on a pillow 10 hours a night, don't mean you know nothing about pillars, all right? Yeah, but I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And he just didn't know what to say. He went, uh, 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 I said, exactly. I went, I do my job, you do, do yours. <laughs> and, he's gone, up. and he's gone, like, didn't know what to say. He just went, sweet, like, all right, next, next room. And then you go into a room and there's, I think it's about 30 or 40 people Half girls, half boys, and this is apparently where Lord Sugar is picking the line out. Oh, so you watching on camera or something? Yeah, like something like that. And there's 40 from London. I've got it a little bit wrong, so I went, I've, sorry, I've, I've passed all the tests, then I've gone home and I've been called back. Oh, okay. And this is, there's 40 in London, 40 in Manchester, 40 in Bristol, 40 in Ireland, 40 yeah, in no, Scotland, and then they pick the three or whatever out of each group to go on the show. And the first thing you've got to do is, you're, you're, 20 boys, 20 girls. They say, right guys, line up. Now, we want you all to quickly, without talking to each other, we don't know who these people are, line yourself up from ugliest to best looking. And you look at everyone, you think, what well, And I was going, well, you're an ugly bastard. You go down there. Like, so I was just, <laughs> and, and I was sort of plotted up near the ugly end. And, and, and there was all girls fighting at the top, saying, I'm the prettiest. And I thought, what is going on here, yeah? <laughs> then the next one, they said, right, we've got you align yourselves up without talking to each other. Uh, youngest to oldest and we've done it I sort of ended up in the middle ish and it was all different ages and bits and pieces and, and then they then you say real age and they, you, we all got it wrong and then there was a there was a task um, where you had to set up a flat pack furniture and they put you in groups and uh, I got in a group and they went right you've got to build this desk well I'll give it large I went listen I went I've sold furniture all my life I'll be the project manager I'll build that in 10 minutes yeah and I just I just got it I, I said what are you good at what are you good at what are you good at I started building it had five minutes, looked over the other groups, had built a desk, our group was all arguing. <laughs> and I didn't even build it. And I'm laughing. And I thought, oh, well, I'm going to get booted out here. And there was one more test. And this was the uh, selling test. And this is where I knew I'd lap it up. And they picked, there's a box with all these different goodies. There's a hat in it, a boot in it, a pen, an umbrella. And they pick it up and they go, excuse me, can you stand in front of everyone and sell this thing? Now, there's cameras on you and apparently Lord Sugar is watching yeah. the lineup. So they've gone the first, you come forward, boom, sell that pen, they're going, this pen is the best pen in the world, boom, boom, boom. no good, boom. Then the next person come up, sell this umbrella. This umbrella is the last one in the country, and it's like, I'm, I'm looking for a while, going, what is going on here, like, what's going on? And they've gone, Thomas, you come up here, can you sell this, boom. And they pulled a boot out, and scuffed the pieces, no <laughs> laces in it, and I said, what, this old, this old boot here? And they've gone, yes, oh, are you sure? They went, yeah, this old boot here, sell us this boot. So the lady gave me the boot. I put the boot in her hand like that. And I said, how much would you pay for that boot? And she went, well, uh, five pounds. And I went, sold. <laughs> <laughs> and just walked back and everyone just started clapping. <laughs> and I knew at that point that yeah, I just you, you got it. it. And, and uh, I went home, went home, went, went, no, I think I, had a, I actually had a drink <laughs> with, uh, with our sisters, one of our sisters' birthday, we had a drink. Cut, wait a couple of days, got the phone call and he, and he went, I thought, when I got the phone call, I thought it was one of my mates winding me up. Hello, it's from the beat. I just went, go away up. <laughs> Put the phone Put the down. Phone and they ran me back. I said, no, it's us. Like, we want you on the show. And I went, oh, bloody sorry. I thought it was a wind up. And uh, that was it. I was on there. And I was on the show. What was it like going in the first day? Did you, did you stay there straight away? Is, is it yeah, so like what that? happens is that you, they put you in an hotel. Yeah. And they make you wear your suit. You get picked up in a minibus on your own. It's a bit of waiting. And you just get taken straight to the ballroom. You don't talk to none, and then you go straight into with all sugar. And then we was in there, all sitting, I don't know who anyone is, I'm just looking about thinking, what's going on here? And he went, get on a plane, you're going to South Africa. And that was it, literally, that Done. was it. Yeah, that was Blinding. it. And then, nice. that was, was good. good, I watched all of that one. It was brilliant. I remember, because I've met you before, I've known you, I met you once before in Greenwood's boxing gym in Essex, and then, I remember coming in one day and he was eating some body shots. I thought, fucking hell, he's hitting them a bit heavy. <laughs> yeah, hello, mate. And I got talking to Kevin and I went out and I was sitting indoors with my missus and she put the apprentice on. I was like, that's the fella down the gym, just down the road, <laughs> man. I see him eating body shots about a fucking month ago, or like a few months ago. And um, that was it. Then I, I watched it all. I mean, I like, watched it. It was fucking yeah, brilliant. I, I must say. It must be good when I've done the old train, bash, bash, but it was oh, quite mate, funny, it, really. It, it was, was just good. an experience. Like, I, can't, I can't tell you how good it was. Like, because you're away, I was away for six or seven weeks filming it, you, have, you can't tell none of your friends. You've got to keep it secret. So 
when I when I come out of the show, all my mates <laughs> thought I'd been in the shovel. They all thought I'd been in prison. They was all going up. Where you been? Yeah, there's everyone's a... trying to give me a tour and that. What would you give me money for? I've been away for a few weeks. I went, no, I went, I've been filming a tour. They went, shut up. I even told, I even told them, I, like, I went on The Apprentice. They went, shut up. You ain't been on The Apprentice. You've been inside again. I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a belter. That's an absolute belter. So, what, what, so what, when you've come out now, how's the, how's the life changed around? Because... I mean, you're flying, aren't you? Like you're doing your yeah, TV programs, Master Chef, and so on. Um, you know, what's what's the f- what's what's going on? What's it's, it been like once you come out? How was it? Well, how did it change? When you come out, obviously you've got another few months till the show's on. So uh, it was it was really bizarre, mate, because it was just back to normal, like nothing can happen. Just waiting, 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 and uh, just carrying on grafting, doing what I was doing, ducking and diving. You know, just just being me, going out with beers and that, and then uh, when it got renounced in the pay where I was on the, everyone, everyone was like oh you actually was you actually was filming I was like yeah <laughs> and uh, I invited my friends down the Is pub two are back <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, was all, we was all down the pub watched it and uh, that day mate it literally I, I gone, it was literally that day I'd gone from having a you know a, a decent little business to nationwide within the click of a finger and it, it was bizarre because I couldn't keep up with the orders I, it was Men's and it just catapulted and, and then lucky where I'm you know where I'm hands on I'm, I'm up for it I just got it done I just thought oh, God, I can't let people down and I was in the warehouses in Manchester I was everywhere I was in my van I didn't. I literally didn't stop and then I, I thought I've got to get someone mate what are you doing now listen stop doing that come with me like on the phone getting everyone on, and we just we just carried grew on quick and grew quicker. quicker and quicker and it was unbelievable yeah so Good. I love this I love the um I guess one of your, your pitches I love you I've heard you pitch this loads of times the mattress come on it's not the top mattress it's not the love go on do your what pitch one, first what one, I t- I'm remember I had my friend on the phone oh, you, yeah, you sold it right. so it was a blind so obviously we make all our, all our make mattresses yourself, here in the yeah. UK we've got a factory that uses all UK products based in Manchester now it's just second to none quality in a different class and uh, our best selling mattress is the aloe vera mattress now this is a fantastic mattress right you can go into dreams go into Benson's you cannot see quality like this right Just let me tell you a bit about the mattress it has got 3,500 individual pocket springs. They're fully orthopedic and they are lovely, right? No, none of that cheap stuff. They're all separated, individual, with a lumbar support system. On top of that, they've got a thick layer of NASA memory foam. You sink into it like it's a cloud. These matches are about 17 inches deep as well, yeah? So not them, them thin ones. Nice and deep. Ventilation system, hypoallergenic, anti-roll, anti-dust mite, all singing, all dancing. And if you thought that wasn't enough, it's got an aloe vera gel across the top which is good for blood pressure, good for posture. In fact, you have the best night's sleep of your life. Now, if you walk into the big brand shops, you're looking, in a king size, let's say, around £1,800 for one of these mattresses. Now, you're not going to believe me, but if you buy it today, I can do it four and a half. How's that sound? Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. You've done that before, I guess. Only you? a couple of times, I think. <laughs> So what's, what's next for Tom Skinner? What's the future old for you, my well, bro? Well, we've got a baby on the way, aren't I? It's yeah. 10 days today. On, is it 10 days, Sinead? Yeah. 10, 10 days, days until the baby's due. So Any I minute mean, now. Any minute now, she's ready to pop. I want it to come out now because she's getting a bit moaning, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she was telling me earlier, she said she had a little scare, Braxton Hicks or something. Braxton Hicks, yeah. She said Tom went, why actually was like, Mate, I, nervous. Do you know what she said she'd be coming you, Dan. It's well, all right, babe, it'd be I, all right. I had a panic, I just got into the pub, right? <laughs> And I was on my third stella, and I get a phone call. I'm really not well. I was like, what do you mean you're not well? The baby's coming. I went, nah. Who's got a car? Random person. Take me now. Nah. Like, got this person. Just come on, overtake them all. Got the other. Come on, get in a car. She's going, I'm, I'm all right. Get in a car, I'm going. Get in the motor. Baby chair, suitcase, the lot. 100 mile an hour, wrong side of the 127 to the hospital. There. They gone. Got in dev shit. Half hour, that's when I was just back to Nick's babe coming home. <laughs> palpitation sitting there I was panicking like you can't I was on the phone me mum mum what do I do she's going calm down calm down <laughs> so I lost it. I'll see your new motor today it's beautiful the Bentley yeah mate how yeah. does that feel owning that coming I from love it mate it's better than the old van's been driving about with for years you've um, always wanted one always wanted a Bentley since I was a kid and uh, look I, I, I'm, I'm not sounding flashy at all but I bought I bought a brand new Audi Q8 a few months yeah. ago which is worth three times as much yeah, yeah. But it's saying about that Bentley that I've been looking at them for ages and I thought, can I afford it? Can I afford it? Can I afford it? And I thought, do you know what? I've worked bloody hard. You have, yeah. I ain't yeah. stopped grafting. I'm up before every morning. I'm going to treat myself. And uh, I found it. I went down there. I got in it. And 
it's look, it's, it's not brand new. It's like it's almost fourteen years old, you know. But it's yeah. a, it's just a Bentley, and it, I sat in it, and I went down to my dad, and my dad went, "That's you." He went, "That is you." And I went, "He went, mate." And I went, "I didn't even, I didn't even." I just went, "I'm in love with the car," and and uh, they looked after me down there, and I bought it, and I picked, and I literally for two weeks I had to wait while they serviced it and put new tyres on it, and it was the best. The longest two weeks of my life. life. Yeah, but yeah. Day, when you picked it up. Well, that day I must have done three tanks of petrol in it. I just didn't stop driving <laughs> around in circles. Come and pick you up. I just, I just loved it. Do you know what I mean? That's uh, amazing. Yeah. yeah so. So what's what's the future? You've got the baby coming. Anything else you think in the future? What's what's the so, business? Any business plans? Yeah. Any? So we, obviously every day we scan up the business. We're, we're hopefully going to cut the shops in the new year. Corona dependent, oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We've got some big TV so shows. Corona's not affected you this year, is it? It's it hasn't you've... affected me because we're online and we're delivering, we yeah. sanitise everything, make everything in the UK. I mean, we struggled during the first lockdown, yeah, uh, yeah. which was difficult. Like, I mean, it was hard the first lockdown because we, we are sort of upscaled and then stopped and it was yeah. what we're going to do. But we sort of carried on for it with March back on and uh, yeah, just keep upscaling the business. Got a few TV shows in the pipeline that I'm excited about. That I can't talk about can't just talk yet, about it. No, but, that's fine. That's but fine. they're they're big ones, yeah. um, and I'm looking forward to doing more TV work and looking forward to meeting me baby boy. So just, life's just beautiful just, at the yeah, moment. It's just good, mate. It's just good. So have you got any funny stories you can tell us, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> without getting arrested, or yeah, without getting arrested. <laughs> yeah, we don't put that on camera. What, what? There's no cat sauces here. We keep it. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, uh, That's grasses in Cockney, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. You, what, what should I talk? I don't know, really. What, I don't what, know. Anything that pops up, you don't matter if not. Just, and I'll put you right on the spot here. <laughs> uh, let me think of a story. Any other school ones? Anything on the market the, um, ones? I've got the... I've got the uh, I'll, I'll tell you the story on the market store when I was younger. When, 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 um, if this is too naughty, we'll, we'll, let, it, we'll let it if I know. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was in a market stall, and I, I've always trained, I've always boxed. I'm yeah. quite fit. I say I'm quite fit. I've got a bit of a dive, but I'm quite fit. And uh, I'm on a stall, and it was just before Christmas, and I was selling these Nike sets. I had a bottle, a running jacket, a little watch, and they was flying out 25 quid. And I was going, boom, it was amber. It was all day selling, selling. And I had these diamond reindeers. And it was a good day on the market, just before Christmas, busiest day, like the Saturday just before. Anyway, these, these little kids can't stall. There's only young, can't stall. And I see them. Like they were trying to nick things, and I was I went, you eye on them. And a fella came around the other side of the store, an old boy, and he said, Do you want to buy any tobacco, mate? And he pulled out a bag full of tobacco. He's trying to get me attention while the kids chew up. To chew up. <laughs> so I've just I've just clumped him, <laughs> didn't even know, just clumped him. It just went like bang, bang. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, done. Like. And uh, he said, You wait, I'll be back. And I thought, Oh, here we go, like this ain't good, Do you know what I mean? I'm, no. I'm on a stall. 100 miles from home, I can't run up, I'm on my own. I've got two young boys with me, like, we're yeah. back in trouble. And we have got fortunes on us. So, come to the end of the day, I said, right, I said, before anything happens, I said, get this money, stuff it under the seat in the van. And I literally, so the pouch was still on, empty. So if someone come up, I can always throw it away, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I uh, got the pouch, and I had a cut, it was cold, I had gloves and tissues in it. And all of a sudden, about 15 geezers come walking down the market. Half of everyone's packed up. And I thought, oh, and this was obviously the geezer, there's another fair come right up to me, he said, you've whacked him. I said, mate, I said, listen, I said, I'm trying to live in. I said, there was young kids on here, like, they was, they was robbing off me, mate. Like, I, he, I said, look, I, I've been around a little, I know I'm only young, mate. I said, no, the coup. I said, probably don't hit yourself when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. I said, but they was nicking off me just before Christmas. He said, he, t- he said, what was you nicking? Like, he, he went, well, we're just trying, he said, look, he's one of us, like, you can tell that. And uh, I said, mate, look, I don't, I don't want to wag, do you know what I mean? I said, I'm here with the two boys. I said, yeah. please leave it at that. And he said, nah, he said, You've got to sort it out. We want some. We want something off you. And I went to him. Well, I tell you what, then, mate. I said I've had a good day today. I said, uh, what about we have you? I went. You a betting man? He went. Well, yeah. I said, all right. Let's flip a coin. Everything in my in my pouch you can have. Yeah. <laughs> and he went. All right. I said, what do you want? He went. I'll have heads. I flipped the coin. Caught it on me hand. I went. Heads. You've won. Have me pouch. Threw him the pouch. He's opened it up and it's obviously empty. He just looked at me and he went. I've got to shake your hand, mate. I've got to shake your hand, mate. Is that what he done? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I drove out Brilliant. there shaking, Think, thinking, how have I got away with this? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you've had some great times down there, haven't you? Yeah, and, um, so with, with your dad and that, like, you're so much like your dad, aren't you? Like, when I met, when I first see him, I thought, it's like, you're like mini-me. Yeah. It's mental. I mean, what was it, where else did your dad teach? I'm quite interested. Yeah, like, I mean, look, 
me and my dad, we're like we're mates. Like yeah. we're four and out so many times over the years. Like, well, I didn't, I didn't speak to him for three years once, just because we fell out of a saying stupid. Yeah, you know, like, and, but but we're best we mates. Do, that, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, shit, yeah. like. I go, what? Well, I ain't talking to you. I go, well, that's sweet. Like, so and similar, we, you, both you, you both like, you ain't going to give in, are you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, uh, yeah, he just, he just taught me how to sell, how to be a people and respect. That like Manners are a big thing to me. Like I can walk into a restaurant and as soon as someone's rude, I walk straight out again. I'm funny yeah, like that. I think yeah. manners are the biggest thing. I always try and hold the door open. Yeah. I always, I've always been like that. And, and even when I've been absolutely on, on the floor, I had a tenner in my pocket, literally, like struggling. I'd always make sure that old old values. If yeah. I go out, I'll buy the lady a drink. I'll always have the dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, that won't change yeah. me as a person. Down, won't change me as a person. No, that's lovely, Tom. No, I mean, I mean, to say you ain't changed you at all. You're still up at four o'clock every morning. You don't stop, do you? You're proper. And I'm still being the public end of it. Only one bad thing is bought West Ham. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 it's funny because I'm Hill's supporter. Tom's a, a West Ham supporter. And we're in your manor. Yeah, we're in my manor. We're in South London now, mate. We're in South London. What a lovely place it is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It is nice. I'm over. Melbourne it's in bad in the, in the deep oh. south, is it? <laughs> But um, no, listen, mate, I really appreciate this time today, mate, as usual, mate, and it's lovely seeing you as it always is. And um, I'm looking forward to meeting the little fella soon. Yes, Not long left, 10 days, so fingers crossed it's be, it'll be nice and soon. But yeah, mate, thank you very much for joining the Minecraft podcast, my friend. And um, mate, it's been a pleasure, mate. Carry thank on doing you. what you're doing as well. It's fantastic. Thank you yeah? so much, Tom. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, guys. See you next week, guys, the Minecraft podcast.